Plaintiff Brandon Mobley says he got in a brawl over his friend's gambling debts and then got stuck with the bar bill. He's suing for $500 for the bar tab and emotional distress. Defendant Michael Marino says Brandon needs to mind his business and slow down on the booze because he's not responsible for the brawl or the bar tab. You're friends, or at least you started out as friends. Your Honor, um, I'm suing my ex-friend Michael um, for a bar tab and um, emotional distress. We are, what happened? I met uh, my ex-friend Michael here back in August of last year. And yeah. ever since then, we've been really real cool. Like, I met him through a mutual friend, and we always kicked it. We, we've been to Six Flags, to the bars, oh. you name it, we've been around. However, okay. uh, back, uh, I want to say a couple months ago, I found out that Michael has a little bit of a gambling problem. Mm. And it's coming to the point where uh, it's not only affecting, I guess, the people around him or his, fam his family, but it's affect affecting his friends as well. So I figure I've reached out to Mike, see what I can do, either get him some help or see if I can um, help him with his debt, whatever I can do, because that's my friend ultimately. Yeah. So um, I invited him out to the, to the bar. By the time I got there, Mike was already there drunk off the top. Mike abruptly ran to the restroom. Well, yeah, if you're drinking, that helped. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I waited about 15 minutes and I was trying to find out, well, you know, did he pass out? Was he throwing up? What was going on with Mike? Um, I went back there, Mike had disappeared completely. He wasn't in the restroom, he wasn't throwing up, nowhere to be found in the bar. So I went back to the bartender, which we're regulars there. So I, I only did what was right. I paid the tab, tipped the woman, and was going to just call it a, call it a night. A gentleman came up to me and more or less was, you know, very aggressive, asking me, well, you know, do you know Mike? I see that y'all were having drinks. Um, he owes me money, ultimately. And I told him more or less, you know, because he was being aggressive with me, I told him to f off. So from there, we got into a scuffle at the bar and I had to whoop his ass. Pardon me, Your Honor, but... Yeah, you had to, huh? I, that was the only way. That's the only way. You know, after that went down, I left. I don't know if the cops were called or what, what have you. I just... I went home after that. I don't want to get into altercations on the strength of people knowing that I know Mike and thinking that I'm going to pay, I guess, his gambling debts or whatever. When you guys go out to drink, what do you drink? Me, um, I'm a Scotch guy, Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker Black and Coke. Okay. And when you go drinking, what do you drink? Hen Hennessy. 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 Okay. And Scotch. What about his story? Your Honor, I am not guilty. I don't even know why he's... Yeah. I, I okay, well, that settles it. He, hey, he told me. He, he told me like that. No, go ahead, Mike. I don't even know why he's suing me, um, but one day we, he called me up to meet me at a bar. Sure. And when I got there, then I ordered, I ordered a beer, and he was just trying to talk to me about gambling. And I told him I, have, I used to have a gambling addi addiction, and I stopped because that's the side of me that I don't want to go back with. And I w he kept on continuing, so I just paid for my beer and I left. You Indeed. paid for your beer? I paid for my beer and I left. No, you had a little bit more than beer. I don't, a lot I more. I don't think so. He, 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 I don't he read the so. booze. So he had more than beer. He was already at the bar and he was already halfway drunk. I only ordered one beer and I paid for it. With his fight that he got into, his altercation, that has nothing to do about me. That night, I only had four beers. You were at the bar first. When I got there, he was already drunk. No. Well, I, I, I'm not, I, okay, I'm not saying who's drunk or not. I just want to know who got to the bar first. He did. It's he just was. a separate. <laughs> he was. Yeah. Yana, I think he's drunk now. <laughs> no, no. You want to place a bet on that? You want to place a bet on that? You're suing him because you say he walked out on the bill. Correct. And you said you paid. The bill. Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. But when I look at the bill here, you said uh, Johnny Walker Black is, is your... Yeah, Scotch. Ten of them were ordered. Correct. And four buds, which are mine. As you can see... Uh, yeah, and what about the, the ten Johnny Walker Black? That's your favorite drink. You had those, too. No, I only had the four Budweiser's. That's what I had on, on that tab right there that you see. And that's you, why I was you telling had... you he was already drunk okay, by the time I got there. you did have some Johnny Walker Black. I had one beer, and that was it. So your drinks aren't even, you're saying these drinks aren't even on this tab? Yeah, because I only ordered one beer and I paid for it. That's it. I, this is what I mean. I don't even know why he's suing me. I have no, 
idea what he, why he got into a fight. No idea. I can't, I can't drink well, that fight, much booze okay. in one night. I can dismiss the fight part, not because you didn't get into it. Correct. And I pity the guy that tried to fight you. Uh, <laughs> now, you're emotionally distressed. Why? We live in the same town, so I still have to go out and, and live my life and do whatever yeah. it is I like to do. And I don't have, I, I don't like you, the fact that I have to look over my shoulder because of a fight that I got into over Mike. He didn't send the guy over. So uh, on that, you can't recover. You both drink. And there's evidence that there's a $156 bill there. And you're saying he had 10 Johnny Walkers. I don't know. I if mean, he... that, you know, it's, it's hard for me to believe that one person was able to walk out of that place after having 10 Johnny Walkers. Now, I admit, I don't drink, so it's not like I know that. but. I would think that that's a lot of Johnny Walkers. Though. Yeah. Well, if he had a tab already, and he could have paid for someone else to have drinks as well. But by the time I got the bill, that's where it was at. Ten Johnny Walkers and and the four buds. I only had one beer. That's it. No one goes to the bar for one beer. Is this friendship? <laughs> <laughs> You can, you know, sometimes you just take things easy. Yeah. I was planning on drinking more, but then, like, you know, with the whole, with the whole, you asking me about the whole, uh, Gambling and all like that. I just got fed up. So I was just like no Mike I was trying to help you to see I was trying to see if I could help you out Is of your this problem. friendship over pretty much if I don't get my, my money back No, <laughs> this it's for money Nito. Back. I haven't seen him since the bar situation. I don't owe you any money. This is your that, tab. That's not my tab Like bro, that's not my tab. Okay Just one beer is your tab you know, to drink, Why didn't but... you bring here as a witness the uh, bartender? And, and she and couldn't, she couldn't make it. So you did ask her. Yes. And if she was here, she would say that he had 10 Johnny Walkers. Absolutely. And she was upset by the fact that I had to even get into a fight over what, what's going on well, with that Mike. I can imagine. No, no, I did not have more than one beer. Well, I'll also tell you he's not a gambler. I used to gamble, but I'm a year straight. I haven't gambled in over a year. And so... Y'all applaud that? What the? Well, hey, if man, he hasn't gambled, you, 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 that's This man, I got into a fight because perfect. he owes somebody money, not because he, he's a nice guy and we getting clapped for it. He, he owes money. <laughs> I don't know where we losing this. You went out and you went drinking. And it, the chances are that when you go to a bar and you're a regular at the bar, my guess is you had more than one drink. I don't know for sure, but I'm not giving him the whole 156, but, you know, at least you're going to pay for maybe the bad decision to be going to the bar that night. So $75 for the plaintiff. I didn't get a chance to have a um, Johnny Walker and Coke. So, well, four beers, that's it. I cannot see myself moving forward from this friendship. Plaintiff Inez Griffin says she asked her husband to leave after a big blowout, but never expected he'd disappear with her entire stimulus check and the family car. She's suing for $2,000. Defendant Herman Griffin says his wife tossed him out, so he took what he believes is his. This is what she wanted. She needs to deal with it. You're suing your husband, so what is this about? First off, um, I've been married uh, for 18 years to Mr. Griffin here, and um, I'm here because he accessed uh, some stimulus money that belonged to me oh. and took it and didn't make it available to me. So I'm here to get that money back along with um, a vehicle that is in both of our names mm -hmm. that he's illegally possessing. Let's deal first with the stimulus checks. What particularly happened? Okay, um, April of 2020, Mr. Griffin and I had a misunderstanding and I asked him to exit based on the way he was dealing with me, talking with me, and um, he basically disappeared. He slipped out the door, taking our car with him, and Her. he disappeared. When you say our car, is a it car a... that we mutually own together. Okay, so it's in both your names. Yes, correct. Okay. And I haven't seen Mr. Griffin in 14 months. Where did you move to? Basically, I was here and there. Out of town, out of state. I was in the same state. state. Uh, basically, I was still in the same community. I was in the community. Even in the same community? Yeah. He abandoned our marriage. Yes. He abandoned me. Yeah. Uh, left me for dead. Ooh. I didn't know where he was. Oh. I looked for him feverishly. He changed his phone number three times. He blocked me from all his social media. And no matter what I did to try to find him, well, uh, uh, I could not. Basically, that was because of things that was being said on there. You're in a fight. 
and or, or an argument, but 18 years together, and you just bolted and I, didn't let her know. I, 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 yes. I did not bolt. She asked me to leave. Okay, so you walked out the I'll door. I went out the house. Yeah, that's that's less than a bolt. <laughs> okay. I didn't just leave. I just didn't abandon but her. After 18 years, you only two right. or three times in touch with her. My mom was dying. Sorry. I was under a lot of stress. Basically, he abandoned the marriage. That's basically what it was at the end of the day because I was, like, at the scene of the crime, so to speak, because I was home yeah. trying to keep the household together, yeah. keep myself together, take care of myself. So uh, the issue in question is money that was given from the government. Yes, the IRS It was given check. to him as well as me, but unfortunately he accessed mine and his based on an old tax return. Um, I didn't have an opportunity to get my information separated from him when I found out he wasn't going to return. But no matter how hard I tried, by the time I did, he had already accessed the money and kept all of it. I assume be you filed taxes jointly. The I filed separately. But yeah. unfortunately, when I did, it was too late to update the information separately from him. The payments had already gone out. Okay. Or they would have sent a separate so payment to my bank account. So basically, your argument there is with the IRS. They sent out, based on the last information they had of you two, right. as a married couple, that you filed jointly. They So they had both your names. And so when the IRS sent you a check... It was deposited in an account that an account. I was a third party to and didn't have access. Only he had access. Okay, so it was deposited... I only received only my part, sir. I... I don't understand. Well, wait. The deposit was in both your names. Correct. Correct. Right, but it was in my account. Yeah, but if it was in both I don't uh, know. The names, account was in my name. I don't know about the check. I, I, I only received my portion. I don't know. I provided the court with the documents that proves that it went into an account that the rush card that was attached to that account, I didn't have access to, but the uh, tax account the, was and, in both and, of our names the because amount. the tax account so. that was filed was both of ours. Your argument is with the IRS. Well, uh, I spoke to the IRS just you should here. be giving her half the money, right? It's half her money. It's a, it, it, Look, a lot of couples are going through this. This wow. is not an unusual problem. There was a first initial deposit of 2400 that we did communicably and amicably split. Amicably. So he's very aware that these other two payments were supposed to be split as well. All I have knowledge of is the one portion of that money. That's all I have knowledge of. Now, I couldn't go back Whatever into... Whatever money was put in, though, is for both of you, not for just you. I have emails where he acknowledges. He acknowledges that money and that that money belongs to me. If you look at um, Exhibit B, he talks about um, I'm, something about the um, my, my credit that he made good or so forth, whatever. And in Exhibit okay. C, it talks about um, just getting the money that belongs to me that, that, should be, uh, uh, that should be accessed on my behalf. Exhibit D, he's talking about... He he says, all I see is you falsely get some money, which is no matter than what, $2,000. I pay you and move on. You got to ask yourself in the court, was I in my right mind? Of course you were. You knew that the money belonged to me. Okay. What evidence is that? Okay, on the car, which you, yeah. it's in both your names, you have the car, right? Yes. Right. Okay, you're driving the car, right? Right. You should get her name off the, the, the title. That's what I'm trying to do now, sir. Okay. Technically. He is, he's called what, what's called illegally possessing it. Because I have 100% rights to that car, just like he does. But because he's hiding and I don't know where he if is, the police, I'm no, not in a position no, to chase somebody down and find a car. <laughs> so he's got sir, the car, sir. he stole my stimulus money, he gets everything. The plates are in my name. Yes, but what about her name? It's on her the name is on the registration. Listen, my, my, my name okay. is on the registration. Okay, the title, I make the, the payments for the car. Listen, Judge Jerry, I, I have been speaking for care. 14 months consecutively care. with the care. finance company, going back and forth with them okay. about him with what this car. What payments have you paid on the car? What payments have you paid in the car? What payments have you paid on the car? Excuse me, excuse me. This car was purchased in 2018. <laughs> Sir, remain okay. at the stand. All right. Right. This car was purchased in 2018. We were together for the first two years or so. We both, I drove him to work every day. We both rode the car. The night on April 12, 2020, when he disappeared, he took <laughs> the car with him. And then, like I said, when the stimulus payments came out, it went into the joint tax return and he just took it all. 
Here is where the hang-up is. Under the law, you're still a married couple, and a dispute of a married couple as to who gets what belongs in a family court. I, I spoke with the IRS, and they told me my only recourse was to file a civil suit. I agree, but not in this court. Listen to me. I'm, I'm trying to help you. I am going to give a decision, what they call without prejudice, which is not going to stop you from going to a court which has the authority to change where that check goes to. But in I was in the household holding down the bills and trying to care for myself. I'm chronically ill and, I, and I'm disabled and I needed that money. At the height of the pandemic, he walks out and abandons me. That money was to help me, not to solely help him. He took everything. My rent is behind, my utilities are behind. I need that money. Okay, on that issue, on that issue, she I asked me to leave. I did not walk out. I've, that's a fight you're having. That's a separate issue okay. on you know that half that money that is in dispute here was supposed to be for her. So the right thing to do is to man up and give her half that money. However, this court does not have the jurisdiction to make sure the money goes to you. You have a dispute in this marriage whether you decide to separate, whether you decide to divorce, whether your marital assets should be to, uh, split up. This is just like any other marital asset you have. The courts have to decide how it's going to be split up if you can't reach an agreement. How do you feel when you see her crying? Like, this is your wife of 18 I feel, years. I feel, I feel bad, but I, but I doesn't have the money. I don't have it. I can't order you to do it because you have to go to the right court to do it. Bring it to family court oh, in sorry, your right. county. I'll get my money. I'm going to take it to the right court. Dismissed without prejudice. I feel really drained. I feel saddened. Um, I feel sorry that I had to go through all of this, and yet he still benefits financially off of my back. Like I said, I don't have the money, and that's it.